one. Yeah. Well, hello, hello, everyone. We are back to Pottergon 2024 with amazing runner complex Beaver. Beaver, hello. Beanie present? Uh, can you tell about this category a little bit? Uh, I'll, I'll explain oh. it during the run. Oh? Huh? Okay, everything is alright, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, I'll explain it yeah, during the run. Okay. It will make so, more sense. Yeah, just before the start of the run, I'll take a small uh, break to say Juicy, not long time ago, donated $50. Thanks for having me in the commentary. That was the uh, the comment for the donation. Again, thanks so much, the Bandit team, for donations. That's it for me, giving you everything right now, Bior. All right, I guess we'll, we'll start, and uh, I'll explain the game as we go. So, uh, uh, three, two, one, go. All right, first thing, we can skip cutscenes in this game, which is good. Um, so, we're in the prologue now, which we only have uh, a jump and a climb. Uh, one thing about movement in this game is if uh, you don't have a dash, which is basically only in the prologue, it's faster to do these little jumps here, like this. It gives you a tiny speed boost. So, the cool thing about this game and why it's such a good speedrun is that straight from the beginning of the game, once uh, we get our dash... Yep. You might need to restart. The timer literally won't start. Okay, I can restart. That's fine. Thank it's you. On. I see it. At least. It did. Start. On my end, it isn't starting. Oh. Huh. It did start. Do Do I go or do I not go? <laughs> if it's going, go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's just. All right. Continue. So we have dashes now, and so we can do everything that we can do at like the end of the game, even though it's the start of the game. The game just doesn't teach us how to do it. So, uh, we can do cool things, even though, uh. We shouldn't know how to do them. So I'm doing wall bounces off these walls, which is uh, uh, jumping on uh, uh, dash up straight up the wall and then jump, and it gives you like more speed. And then I'm doing stuff called wave dashes, which is like that, where you can uh, dash and keep your momentum like this, uh, and hypers and supers and uh, a, a whole lot of cool uh, movement tech, basically. Uh, I'm not dead. Cool. Um, so I am going to be donating for every death I get, uh, so I mean, I'm not going to try to die, but if I die, cool, we get to uh, donate money. Uh, yeah. Alright, so the category. So regular uh, game is any percent, right? Obviously. every every Almost every game has any percent. But this is beanie percent, which uh, is like any percent, where the time ends when you get to the epilogue. But basically, this game has uh, A-side chapters, which is like the regular chapter in the game. And then it has uh, B-side chapters, which you can enter by collecting these cassettes. And uh, then once you get the cassette, you can leave and go do the B-side, which is a harder version of uh, the level, basically. And uh, the idea behind uh, Beanie is to get to the epilogue without completing any A-sides. So we go into a chapter, collect the cassette, and then... Uh, go and leave the chapter and complete the b-side. I'm dead. I need to jump off there. Well, there's a there's money to charity um, And and the reason this works is because uh, when you I'm dead again uh, When you complete the b-side it still progresses the game so you can go on wow, that's stupid uh, you can still go on to the uh, The next chapter I can survive this Wait, that was the third one uh, it doesn't matter. I, there's a death counter at the end of the run, so oh, yeah. we don't need a count. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, look. So, uh, clearly the uh, organizers hated me when they picked this category because basically I just get to play harder levels and uh, and die more. And I'm playing poorly, of course, so that's cool. Um, so you, you might get to see me rage at stupid mistakes like that. Come on. There we go. That's what I was trying to do. And you can see that the platforming in uh, this is much harder than the platforming in the original level that uh, I was doing earlier. There we go. So, uh, like I said, you get you have all of your like movement options right from the beginning of the game. The only difference is like the different uh, mechanics in each level. So this is 
uh, Forsaken City, and the mechanics in here are these like ice platforms that fall, and those uh, traffic blocks that once you grab onto them, they start moving. Uh, and then we'll see different chapter, different stuff in later chapters. Also, if you have not played this game casually, you should because it's like a really cool story, and also the game is just really fun, so you should uh, play it. Ba basically, we follow Madeline, who is a uh, who is, go is going through a, a lot of a lot of deep stuff, and so uh, the 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 journey up the mountain for her is not just a, a journey up the mountain for the sake of climbing a mountain. Uh, but I'll I'll let you guys enjoy the story of Celeste if you want to go enjoy the story of Celeste. Also, it's cool because it's based in Canada. Celeste Mountain is a real place in Canada. All right, so we're coming up towards the end of Forsaken City B. Uh, also, if you think this platforming is hard, you have seen nothing yet. Towards the end of the run, there will be a lot of, uh, a lot of hard stuff to do. Alright, so at the end of each of the B-sides, we have a room with these cassette blocks that change with the music. Uh, just like when we found the cassette originally in the A-side. And that's where the heart is in the chapter, which is the end of the level. Alright. So we finished uh, 1 and B, which means we've now unlocked 2A. So we can go in 2A, collect the cassette, and move on. Just as we've been doing. Uh, also, cool thing about when you're speedrunning this game, also six deaths is really bad in there, but whatever. Um, when you're speedrunning this game, uh, the time only counts when you're actually playing, so if you can like kind of take like short breaks in between each level, but obviously I'm not going to do that because marathon reasons. Because RTA estimates. But uh, like the end game time you can see in the top left uh, only counts when you're actually a a in, in a level. All right, nice, got that. So uh, here uh, we find a mirror and we see uh, a part of us. Uh, literally, the, that's what it's called in the game files. What are, the hell am I doing? I don't know that I've ever died in this room. Like literally ever, uh, whatever. And, and basically it's all of Madeline's bad thoughts, which is again, going towards like the thing that this, this journey is not just a regular journey for her. Uh, and we don't get to see it yet, but uh, eventually that part of us is going to chase us, and uh, later on we're going to fight it, and uh, and then kind of uh, uh, make friends with it, hopefully. Alright, so site B. Uh, so, B, uh, uh, old site uh, shows us these, like, dream box uh, that we can dash through, and then when we get out the other side, uh, we can dash again. And that bird there was a tutorial. Also, yes, in a B-side, which is like a harder version, there's a tutorial. Uh, there's a tutorial in the last level we're going to play this game, in this game, or in this category. Which just goes to show you how much, like, movement options there are in the game. Uh, without the game actually, like, telling you. So, that's fun. Uh, Alright, so this is a part of us. Uh, people just call her Madeline because Madeline, but bad. Makes sense. Uh... She follows us, and uh, if we touch her, then we die. Uh, kind of like uh, Shadow Mario in some games. Wow, I did not think I was going to go up through that. That's fine. Uh, is this fine? Got it. Oh my god, what am I doing? So these first two levels aren't really that bad. I'm just playing really poorly, apparently. Maybe I should have done another black practice run, but who needs that? More deaths is more money for charity, so... Deaths are fun anyway. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully this game like doesn't punish you a lot if you die. You just get st sent back to the beginning of the screen. Um, so it's 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 not all that bad, especially if you die quickly. If you die towards like the end of a long screen, then obviously it's not ideal. But 
Most of them don't lose that much time. For for reference, for the death counter, my PB had uh, 41 deaths. I'm... Um, wow! I'm expecting to have closer to like 70 or something, or maybe 80 based on how I'm now playing. What am I doing? Alright. Come on. There we go. So these things are keys, by the way. Uh, once you collect all the keys in an area, it uh, moves some door somewhere. Um, you know, small mechanics that... Uh, we all know how keys work. In video games. Alright, this is the last screen of Site B, which I freaking hate this screen. I actually did it pretty well. Cool. I really hate that screen. I'll give you six guesses as to why. It's because it sucks, that's why. Alright. So, on to Celestial Resort, uh, is the next level. This is a level that, like, everybody hates because it has cycles, and nobody likes cycles. Also, if you die on a screen, then the, the cycles are, are different. So, try not to die. So, these dust bunnies that you're gonna see on this screen, they move uh, in consistent patterns. So, if you do the screen the same way every time, then uh, you're, you're gonna get the same cycles, but... That's obviously hard to do. Uh, the bad part about Celestial Resort is that the cassette tape is very far into the level. So we have to play like 80 or 90% of the level to, to actually uh, get the cassette and then leave and then go play the B-side. Also, that was a berry. There are 175 red berries in the game and they literally do nothing. They are literally to brag to your friends. The game even says that like in a... Uh, like. Uh, text boxes before levels. This is Oshiro. He's uh, the caretaker of the uh, resort. Um, we don't like talking to him. Ah, that was bad. Not loving cycle stones like a skill issue. I mean, you're right. I'm gonna go under the platforms here and over that platform. So, I can take some time to explain some of the movement options I get up again. So, we have a dash and we have a jump, right? But, uh, if you dash in the air, then what am I doing? You you lose your dash. Um, and then you need to land or get one of those green dash crystals to get your dash back. Uh, but, if you notice, uh, sometimes I'm like dashing and then jumping. Uh, if you... I don't remember the exact number of frames, but after a certain amount of frames, if you're still on the ground after your dash, then you regain the dash instantly. And, uh, uh, but you're still gonna have some speed there. So if you uh, time your jump input correctly so that it's after that frame window, which I think is something like 10 frames, but before you lose speed, then you're gonna get uh, a large jump, uh, which is called a, a super dash. Uh, or if you're holding down dag, or sorry, no, that's a lie. That you're gonna extend your dash so that you'll get the dash back in the air. Uh, when, uh, one, one second, let me do, come on. There we go. That's a corner boost, uh, or no, a spike jump. There's a lot of terms for a lot of weird things in this game. So a hyper dash is if you dash down and right, uh, you do this like really, uh, not very high dash that goes really far, really fast. And a, uh, a super dash is kind of the same thing, except you're not doing a diagonal dash, you're just doing a dash to the side. So that's a hyper, that's a hyper. Ah. That's a hyper. And then, uh, so supers will give you more height, but uh, uh, less speed than, uh, than hypers. But uh, sometimes you need the more height. So like here, I need to do a super to get up there. And then, like I said, if you uh, time the jump so that it's uh, like 10 frames after your dash, then you're going to regain the dash. And so you extend the dash so that you have it uh, once again, once you're in the air. And that's called uh, extending the dash. 
Uh, so you get like an extended super or an extended hyper. There's another death. And then similarly, if you're in the air and you like dash diagonally down, uh, you can regain your dash really quickly. Uh, it, like this, or well, not like that because I screwed it up. And that's called a wave dash. And literally in the last level of the game, which is like super difficult and really, really freaking hard, they finally teach you how to wave dash. Uh, that's in a, a DLC level that they released later. Uh, Really fun tutorial, actually. Alright, so we're done with huge mass. Basically, I went through that room like three times, four times after clearing uh, uh, different things there. Because uh, Oshiro needed help to do it, apparently. What am I doing? What am I doing? Alright. Also, in case you have not noticed, the music in this game is, like, really good. Alright, we're finally... Nice death. We're finally... Near where the cassette is. What am I doing? This is not how I... This is not how I do this screen. I don't like this screen because of the cycles. Alright, we made it. And here's the cassette. You can actually, like see this cassette like way earlier in uh the level but you like you can see that like upper left portion there but you can't actually get to it until now yeah no demo uh so a demo dash is a, a crouch dash when you're crouched mounting this hitbox is only like four pixels high and you can like a uh, dash between the dust bunnies but uh uh you used to not be able to do that. Like, you would have to, like, uh, like, crouch and dash and then, like, change your input. And then in a later version, they literally, like, added a button to just crouch dash in the game. It's called a demo dash because it's named after somebody in the Slits community. Their username. Uh, I could have gone there. Whatever. So fun thing about this game, once you beat it, uh, or beat most of it, uh, after you beat all the A and B sides, you, uh, apparently I was not holding left, even though I definitely was, uh, you unlock the C sides, which are like really condensed versions of the levels. They're only like three or four screens. Uh, uh, they're really hard screens. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, but you also unlock golden berries. Uh, and so like there's the regular red berries. Uh, which are only in the A-sides, in case you haven't noticed. Uh, but you unlock, uh, what am I doing? Uh, you unlock golden berries, which you can collect at the beginning of a level, but it does, or you can touch it at the beginning of the level, but it doesn't actually collect the berry until you're on the last screen of the level. And, uh, about berries, if you, uh, die, they, they go back. So the golden berries, to collect them, you have to do the entire level without dying. Uh, which is obviously very hard. Uh, I don't- I literally don't have all the golden berries in the game. I'm still missing three. I actually got one, like, a couple days ago. Uh, I had four left until then. Uh, and it's realistic for me to get two of them, and then the last one would require me to beat the, uh, DLC level with the, uh, tutorial I was talking about. But that would literally take, like, half an hour of perfect gameplay, which is really stressful, especially when you get to, like, the hardest screen- the last screen, which is, like, literally, uh, like, three minutes long. Uh, of gameplay. Uh, so maybe at some point I'll eventually do it, but uh, it, it would be a, a a very gamer move to get that. I think there's something only like a couple thousand people in the world who have done it. Even it, Maybe even less than that. I don't know. I think Perpetuum in chat knows a more accurate number than me. It's, it's, it's very difficult is the whole is the point and if you think that's difficult imagine getting all of the goldens in a row from a fresh save file so beating the entire game without dying 100 uh yeah that's happened 
One person's done that. But the weird thing about it is that the Goldens don't unlock until uh, you first beat the A and B sides. Uh, and the seasides, like the seaside golden stone lock until you beat them for the first time. So you literally have to beat every level like twice in a row without dying. Uh, so... Speaking of no dying. Very hard. Yeah, someone actually beat the game of uh, 100 in one go without freaking dying? Yep. Very difficult challenge. This is, a. Uh, this is Oshiro. If we would have gotten to the final part in uh, the, the A side, we would have seen him like this again. Uh, that was not what I meant to do. We can bounce on his head. He's fine with it, trust me. Oh my god, really? Uh, I do not know the death cycle here. Oh, I can't go back. Cool. Okay, we made it. I'm dead. I love dying. It gives money to charity, so it's fine. That's my excuse. I'm not bad at the game. Alright. Cassette room. Or heart room with cassette blocks. All right, done with frickin' resort finally. For you go those of you who don't know, Celeste is actually my favorite game. Better than all the Harry Potter games. It's not even close. So Ridge has a Ridge has a, this mechanic called wind that nobody likes because who the hell likes wind in video games? It also has these clouds. Cl the clouds are cool. Ah! This is Granny. We we went through her driveway at the beginning of the game, and she was like, uh. If you think my driveway is broken, then uh, uh, just wait till you see the rest of the mountain. But uh, by the end of the game, hopefully we'll be friends. I'm dead. Because wind exists. So the wind only affects you uh, when you're not dashing, so uh, you really want to be dashing around wind. Wow, per Hatoon, so rude. Not in this category, though. Alright, so the set is not very far in Ridge, which is nice. It's right here. Uh, so, fun thing about the, the game, like, the, this is possible to do with this beanie percent, right? But uh, optimally, uh, you the top runners of this game in any percent will actually complete two B-sides because they can complete uh, the B-side or get the cassette and complete the B-side faster than it's possible to complete the A-side. And even for like a mediocre runner like me, it's faster to do that for uh, chapter five. Uh, but then at the top level, people will do chapter six as well. Uh, the B-sides in any percent. Uh, I am not fast enough to do a uh, 6B though faster than than 6a 6b was oh that was a really bad death 6b was actually the uh, golden berry that i got recently all right ridge thankfully is not too bad Boop, boop. Uh, yeah, there's also these moving blocks, which we were never introduced to in the uh, A-side because we didn't get far enough for them. Uh, but they're kind of like auto-scrollers. 
uh, is not fun, obviously. Nobody likes auto scrollers in the speedrun, on my speedruns. But what are you gonna do? And of course, more wind. Oh, that was bad. I mean, I love charity. I'll let you guys enjoy the Ridge B music. It's a pretty good one. I mean, they're all they're all very good, but I like this one. Concentrate for a bit. So these these uh bubbles we see green bubbles which uh they go like a bit far like this and cool nice death that's a really bad death. Uh, in uh, chapter five we'll see red bubbles which uh they keep you in the bubble until you hit a wall or you dash out of them. Uh, but you can start the bubble moving earlier by uh, pressing the dash button. Otherwise, it will only start moving after a little bit. Uh, also, I hate the screen. The screen sucks. Hopefully, I don't mess it up. Cool. I'm gonna wait because there's so many times that I've died there. Ah! Uh, just re I could have waited and not died there, because eventually the block will come back, but uh, it was faster to die and uh, more money to charity. So. Hey! Sometimes you are just holding a different direction than you think you are. Uh, so you can see at me going into the menu if I know I'm gonna die just because it's faster to do that. Because you can just retry a screen from the menu. I think it's a good moment if you're okay to save one thing. Yep. As always. As always, uh, I would like to promote uh, our Trevor project. What is Trevor project is a leading suicide prevention and crisis intervention organization for LGBTQ people. They work to save young people's lives, providing support free and most importantly confidential suicide prevention and crisis intervention programs on platforms when, uh, where young people uh, spend their time. They offer throughout 24 7 online, online, chat, text, and through their uh, purpose-built forum site, Trevor Space. They also uh, provide a public education engage in advocacy effort and develop research. So as always, a really nice company helping a lot of people. So if you have uh, money, you can always support them by explanation mark donation. And if you want to learn more about the Trevor Project, explanation mark charity. Thank you, Mike. That's it for me. Yes, please donate. Of course, if you have money, that's most important. That's true. All right, we're done with chapter five or chapter four. GGs. Damn. We only have three more chapters left, but we're not even done with half the gameplay because the chapters tend to get longer and longer. Um, which I feel like happens in like a lot of games for like no apparent reason. Like later chapters are longer. I mean, I think it's mostly the thing you want to have. Like the start of the game is simple and uh, small. 
but yeah. later you go in, you introduce more mechanics, you introduce more stuff, so... Yeah. I think it's fairly understandable why uh, the, the game becomes longer and longer throughout uh, the gameplay. Yeah. All right, so do not make yeah. the player overboard. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry for interrupting. No, all good. So mechanics in chapter five, we got the red bubbles that I was talking about earlier, and then we get these like dash blocks, which uh they like move from one side of their tracks to the other when you dash. Uh, so you can get a lot of speed with them. Too bad I'm too bad at the game to actually uh take advantage of that. Ah. I'm sorry. May I have a small uh, question? What? What the? Since I'm, I don't know Celeste <laughs> at all, uh, the question is, if you hit uh, the red bubble, <laughs> did you just switch the settings? Appar the apparently I accidentally changed my settings and I paused that first time. <laughs> oh, it happens to all of us. And if it could happen, would say forgetful. But yeah, question is, if you hit the wall, will you die? No, you'll sur you're, you're fine. Oh. Okay. Alright, so this is the way that we go to get the set. Remember I said if you're optimal, uh, or, or if you're decent enough at the game, it's faster to uh, actually get this cassette anyways in any percent. Uh, but, oh my god, I'm being slow. I need to hit this button, but the momentum is can be weird in this game. Alright. A little more about the the story of Celeste is that uh, Madeline, the protagonist, is actually trans, and that's a part of the reason why uh, she's not having a good time with life, and why she's like, I need to climb this mountain. I have to. So, uh, she could have used the services of the Trevor Project. Be good for her. All right, five B. Five B has actually like a big skip, which is one of the reasons why. Uh, uh, it's a lot faster to do it. So you're meant to get these uh, two keys in uh, this next area to progress properly, but you can actually skip them. I might not be able to skip one of them just because I'm bad and I don't remember how the trick works. I'm dead. Cool. Uh, so if I do it properly, then... No, okay. I was meant to try and go back down there, uh, but uh, I screwed it up. Um, so th I won't be getting the other key though, no matter how many tries the stupid trick takes me. This one's not that bad. It loses maybe like 30 seconds. Well, maybe a bit more now because I died. I failed it in my PB though as well, so. The idea here is that we would have fallen back in this room, and then when we die in this room, it would put us here anyways, so we can skip that entire long bubble section. Oh my god, that was bad. Ah! Charity. Oh my he god. more money for charity. I am dying a lot. No, I didn't like that. I liked that and I still died. I don't like this room at all. Can you tell? Oh my gosh, what am I doing? <laughs> Let's blame it on Cycles because it is Cycles' fault. Okay, somehow. Uh, let me be safe here and hit that trigger <laughs> so that I would respawn there in case I failed that uh, extended uh, hyper. Alright, so here we're gonna do a uh, another spike jump. Okay, that was good. That uh, is a pretty hard skip, but it saves a lot of time. Alright, let's not die at the end of the screen now. That, uh, going up there is literally a three-frame window, um, intended at 60 FPS. Nice death. 
You love dying. Ah! Oh my gosh, please, Madeline! <laughs> I don't know what is going on today. These things are called Seekers, uh, because they seek you. Oh, I thought I was dead. There's like a cool skip in this game, or in this room, to like, avoid this having to use the Seeker to destroy these things, but I don't know it, basically. Oh my god, please make that. Okay, good. So this is Theo. He's uh, somebody we uh, we normally meet in uh, chapter one. Actually, you saw him for a second in chapter three. Uh, he was he decided to uh, roll through some uh, the ducks of this the resort instead of uh, doing whatever the hell we were doing. But uh, oh my god, what the heck! Uh, he he got himself trapped in this crystal, and so we need to help him escape the the mirror temple oh my gosh are you kidding me <laughs> i wasn't trying to grab him there hit that seeker oh my gosh <laughs> i'm so good at the game today All right. Uh, what? Did I miss one? Wait, he missed the first one. Oh my gosh! What the heck, game? Oh, because I dashed too early. I understand. I understand. That was just dumb of me. Cool. We love that. We love being stupid. All right. You can see Theo has a sense of humor. This one is clearly impossible. Clearly, Theo has not met me or Madeline. Also, if you're wondering where Theo's from, he's from the magical land of Seattle. Very magical. Alright. Oh! You know what's funny? That was so bad, but I still saved time over my PB on that level. Because I failed the, uh, <laughs> the spike jump for like a minute and a half in my PB because... Yes. Alright, reflection. This is where we learn to use feathers, which everybody hates. And by everybody, I mean me. Because, uh, they suck. That's all I have to say about them. Uh, you can actually use full analog control on these, uh, feathers. Uh, I don't because I am bad. And by bad, I mean I don't want to move my hand from the D-pad to the analog stick. And by don't want to, I mean I'm too slow at it, and so I don't have the time to do it. You can actually use the analog stick for, like, your regular dashes and stuff, too, but it doesn't... You still only have, like, the eight options of where, uh, Madeline can... Oh, really? Really, Kevin? These things are called Kevins? Um... Yes. That's all I have to say about that. So, the cassette is actually just over here. Ah! Ah, come on, Kevin. I'm dumb. 
I'm just so dumb right now. Oh, we're fine. Play it safe. Just grab the cassette. There we go. So while we're having time, I would like to talk about Trevor Space. So Trevor Space is a, a female online community for LGBTQ people between the ages of from 13 to 24. Terror Space helps young people explore their identities, get a diploma, find support, and make friends with a moderated community of international deals. Yeah. That's one of the parts of the Terror project. So, for more we can say about, there's also Crisis Work. Crisis Work is the Terror project saved the lives of LGBTQ people in Crisis every single day. When uh, LGBTQ young people feel lost, they're there to let them know they are not alone. Whenever and but but wherever, uh, sorry, I'm bad at English. They reach out. Their deeply empathetic cries care helps access their inner strength and their, their silence, and they go beyond crisis services to create a more welcoming world for LGBTQ people. For giving a collective system of support and validation, they help young people see the possibility of a future of so, a really nice project. And I hope, as always, you, if you have uh, money, you can always donate it. Alright, and that's yeah. Sorry. We're into six B, which is a very hard level. This is. Like, when people start going for golden berries, as I have and other people have, uh, this is like one of the first ones they get really stuck on, or this is one of the lighter ones they get really stuck on. 6B, 7B, and 8B are like considered three of the hardest ones, and then the farewell one, which is the 30 minute one, is like, uh, on a, in a league of its own. So, a lot of people are just missing the four, 6B, 7B, 8B, and farewell. Uh, I was missing those until I got 6B the other day. Um, but yeah, you, you can see there's a lot of a lot of things that can kill you in this level right now. So you need to be very precise. And soon enough we're gonna meet up with uh, a Badlin again, but she's she's gonna look a bit different, to say the least. Um, and she's gonna be actively trying to kill us instead of just like following us around. So. That's not ideal. Alright. Do a little skip there by extending a super. First we get like this, uh, this downward section. We're going down the depths of the... Uh, so, in the A-side uh, cutscene that we skipped, the idea between behind uh, this reflection level is that... Uh, uh, during a dream, you're going up and up using those feathers, uh, but then Badalyn is like, no, and uh, she knocks you down all the way back to the start, the bottom of the mountain, and uh, Madeline wants to give up, um, but uh, she, let me, okay, that was a hard part. She finds a way to persevere and eventually make amends with Badalyn. Alright, so here, here's Badalyn. Her hair is kind of funky, and uh, she has these lasers that uh, will kill us. And uh, so hopefully that doesn't happen too often. Or, you know, at all. So yeah, while we're still here, I'd like to mention that we are getting really closer to one of the milestones of our uh, whole uh, charity event, and that is uh, uh, VHS kind. As always, we have few incentives throughout the uh, whole quarter song, uh, quarter gun, I'm sorry, <laughs> and one of them being VHS kind. And right now we are only $15 away for it to increase up to 13 
That's gonna be insane if you can. <laughs> okay, that's it for me, Beaver. Sorry right. for interrupting. No, all good. I need to concentrate on this level anyways. And I just died because of course I did. This screen kind of sucks because there's like a feather towards the end of it. And as you, I've said, I hate feathers with a passion. And then I'll try my best catching up for you trying to concentrate. Alright, we're on to the last checkpoint of this, uh, or the last subchapter of 6B. A little break here yeah, before battling comes back. Yeah, of course. So for Golden Berry, you must beat all of these screens in one go. Yeah. Without dying. Exactly. Uh, this level in particular has 26 screens, none of which are easy. But uh, for like farewell, for example, if you want to get that bear, that golden berry, it has literally a hundred screens in a row that you have to do without dying. And, and all of them being hard. All of them are ridiculously hard. Yes. Uh, that feels so strange. Like. Maybe people love hardcore. Oh, the developer. By people. I mean, they're Canadians, so or uh, the lead oh, developer is yeah, Canadian, so it must be sadistic, right? Eh, <laughs> probably. I mean, Canadians are kind, me. usually, aren't they? I mean, unless we're like uh, shit-talking Americans. Oh yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> if you actually look at the uh, language options in this game, the uh, the English one is a Canadian flag, whereas in most games you'll see like an American flag or a British flag, because Canada. Yeah. For some reason, the French one is also not a Canadian flag; it's just a French flag. Huh. Weird. Yeah, yeah, Canada has like two flags. One of being French. Interesting choice. Oh, okay, made it. Okay, that's the last screen of Badlin. Oh. So at the end of. 6A, there's like this cutscene where you like make up with Badlin and then you get a, a pink hair, uh, which we're gonna have in the uh, uh, the next level, which means we'll have two dashes instead of just one. Uh, so the next level is uh, Summit, which we're gonna get to the top of the summit. Uh, uh, it's the, uh, the last level of the game. Or the last level of the main game. There's post-game stuff that, that's not included in this. Also, only five de deaths for me in Reflection is like Really good. That is completely That's... accurate, Perpetuum. <laughs> so yeah, as far as I understand, the sixth chapter is one of the hardest for you. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just hard. Yeah, uh, first step, by the way. Yup. So you can see now we have a uh, we start with pink hair, and then once we use one dash, we get sent back to our regular red hair, and then uh, blue hair. The color of Madeline's hair determines how many dashes she has. So in like mods of the game, they like mod it so that uh, like three dashes is like yellow hair or something, and then like four is like green if they want to do stuff like that. There's a very there's a a lot of cool and fun mods for this game. So like even though the the. The insane insanity that people have done in like the base game with the hard levels and stuff and beating them without dying. People have beaten much, much harder levels than the hardest level in the base game without dying. And that's just like, like even like just looking at the gameplay of some of them, I'm just like, I don't even know how to start. Yeah, that's too much for me. Bye bye. <laughs> sort of like that. Yep. So the question is, what's your uh, most favorite levels of the game? Uh, I like the last level, even though it's ridiculously hard. It's just so fun to play, and the music is like ridiculously good. Uh, and then also, su this level summit is really fun because it's it's basically like if you you notice, uh, we're kind of going through like stuff that looks like the first section again because the idea here is we're climbing back up the entire mountain. Um, so we're First, we need to climb some parts of uh, the city, and now we're gonna climb some parts of old site coming up after this cutscene. And so it's split up into these nice chunks, right? So we remember these dream blocks from chapter two. And so uh, we need to get to the third section, 
uh, to get the cassette here before we can uh, go and do the B side. So, the only level that I'll be doing in this run uh, that I haven't beaten without dying is actually Summit B. So that should be fun. In my uh, PB of Beanie Percent, I actually think I, I think it had only like seven deaths or something, which is, considering how stupid some of them were, that's like very good. I think I went like six minutes at one point without dying. Wow. So you will try to get uh, deathless as much as possible during this. Yeah, record. of course. All right. That's gonna be fun to see if you get it. Imagine. It doesn't yeah, even count as, as getting the golden then. <laughs> I mean, it's all I. Uh, oh my god. You don't care about golden berries yeah. for now. In our, in, in our dreams. <laughs> Alright, uh, so the cassette, like I said, is in uh, this resort section here actually just up there. Uh, I need to wait for this cycle. Alright. And you can already hear the cassette music. So we heard your most favorite chapter. Let's uh, take vice versa. What's your least favorite chapter? I mean three. Okay. That's easy. Huh? Three because Wait, of the cycles, that's... the resort. Oh yeah, the cycles. Uh, yeah, I forgot about the cycles. This. Oh yeah, that's fairly understandable. Cycles are always paying percent. All right, summit B. This is the last chapter of the run. Uh, uh, <laughs> Perpetuum B advantage. <laughs> so you can see already, it, it looks similar to what we just did, except there are way more spikes everywhere. Oh lord, how many spikes do you want? Yes. Yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> you should see a uh, uh, Summit C, though. That's even more ridiculous. Like, the the last screen of Summit C is just like... You're just dashing through spikes, never touching the ground for like... Uh, literally like 40 seconds. And it's very precise. Alright. First section without dying is pretty good. Kind of slow though. Repetum says that uh, the last screen of, of 7C is the best screen in the game. That's no, it's it's absolutely true. It's just really freaking hard, but it looks so cool when you do it properly. <laughs> so yeah, screens are basically one of the main things you get for blitzing, right? Sorry, what? Uh, the screens are one of the important parts. Yeah. Which is basically for uh, completion. Alright. This is the last screen of uh, this section. So you can see on like the last screen here, like Badlin shows up and uh, she helps you up in sections of the screen. It's kind of like the gimmick of these screens. All right, on to Sight again. No! I died. That was the first death. That was a very bad death, too. I should not. Ah, okay, now I'm just trolling. Cool. Oh, the Norths are coming. Ah, it's fine. It's all for charity. Yeah. You were so close, I feel like. I mean, I'm like a third of the way through the, the level, not even. <laughs> ah! Uh, what am I doing? That's not how I'm supposed to do that. <laughs> I mean, if it work, oh wait, you died. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I've had a delay. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Okay, just concentrate and play well, right? Right, right, right. What am I doing? <laughs> Sometimes the screen 
it's just easy, and then sometimes I trolling myself. And then you just it's it's all about uh, speedruns or working like that for sure. There we go. Sometimes right. it's super easy for you, and sometimes you oh my gosh, the baddest pack for some reason. So while viewers concentrating, let me just do the self promotion. Uh, so in September. We'll be holding in our annual HP uh, speedrun uh, marathon called Potterthon, where Harry Potter returns and we play exclusively HP games, again raising money for the Trevor project, and as you probably all know, it will happen on September 20th until September 22nd. So if you of course uh, want to first of all submit the runs, you're always welcome. And of course, if you want to watch a lot of Harry Potter content and having a lot of really cool uh, Harry Potter runners, including, by the way, Beaver, a really insane Harry Potter runner too. Uh, what? Me? No, never. I never yeah, run Harry Potter. Uh, yeah, beating uh, Nick's uh, challenge <laughs> wants to say hi. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to watch uh, a lot of Harry Potter uh, content, that's uh, marathon is gonna be for you. And your how is stuff going for you, Beaver? All right, we're past uh, the the resort again, which is good because resort sucks because cycles. Eh, geez. So we're on to uh, Ridge, which is actually a very short section in uh, in some of B. I think it's only like four or five screens, uh, and they're all for. Like, for the fact that we're in Summit B, they're all relatively tame screens. These are snowballs. I don't even, I don't even know if we, we saw these in the B side, now that I think about it. Um, and then yeah, we're already... The of, uh, so they come from the left-hand side of the screen at the uh, height that Madeline is. Uh, and basically, it, it makes it so you can't stay at the same height for too long, or else the snowball is gonna uh, kill you. All right, so we did that. We did that. Yeah. So the 2,000 meters are just four screens. So we're on to. Why did I dash? We're on to uh, Mirror Temple again, and then we'll be on to the final section. And that's a fun one. All right. I hope Norse are not. Coming out for you, Beaver, right now. Nah, I don't get nervous. Yeah. What's nerves? Oh my nerves god. Nerves for. Uh... It's a dumb death. Alright. You get Glorious Celeste, Drew Main Villain, whoever throws the, uh, these doubles at you. <laughs> I guess. Wait, how does. This part, oh, this thing is part. These are the uh, uh, the dash blocks, so they move once you dash, and then they oh, start move. They start going back. Whenever you are not there. Yeah. All right, we're on to the last section, which is like a completely new section. It has 20 flags. We need to get to flag one, and then basically the run is over. All right. So the first couple are pretty easy. We're already at 19, and look at that. We're uh, already at 18. But uh, some of the later ones are really hard. Actually, the hardest, though, is Flag 13. I can't wait to be doing golden attempts on this and then get to Flag 13 and just die like yeah, 20 times. Die. Ah. I'm trying to do a skip here, but I'm failing it. There Come we go. Boys, take your time. Yeah, more, more, you more charity. <laughs> more charity for us. Again, while Beaver is trying to concentrate, let me just do one more small self-promotion real quick. And that is our YouTube channel, this uh, Potter, uh, fun Pottergon uh, YouTube channel. So if you want to see uh, the previous uh, our marathons like Pottergon 2023 or other Potterthons, there were a lot of them. Of course, or you want to watch uh, the what uh of this run or other runs happening this uh marathon you can always check out the, the potter uh, on youtube channel and it's just explanation mark uh explanation mark 
Uh, you two. To get it. Alright, so... We're on flag 10 here. Uh, at flag 8, we actually get a tutorial, which is gonna teach us how to wall bounce. But, uh... If you remember, when we were in chapter 1A, I explained what a wall bounce was. So this is this is your test. Do you remember what a wall bounce is? No, that's okay. The bird's gonna tell us what to do. But basically, I've been using wall bounces the entire run, and it makes stuff like way easier. But you can beat everything that I've done in this game without without wall bounces. But uh, at this point, a wall bounce is required. <laughs> and what wow. a wall? Oh, so wall bounces, you dash up like this here, right? and then when you're beside a wall, you jump, and then you get this big height boost. And of course, I fail it. So that bird taught us how to do that. I. You wanna, this part is like teaching you, you can delay it there. So, and now we're gonna combine it with other stuff. And so, do these wall bounces up. All right, we're on flag five. We're almost at the end of the run. Uh, so time is not when we get to the, the flag, by the way, at the top of the mountain. Cause uh, of course there's gotta be a heart room, like there is. So the time is when, uh, what am I doing? Time is when we collect the heart, which is uh, hopefully gonna be pretty obvious, but uh, can I stop failing? Thank you. Ah! This is a wall bounce. There we go. Yeah, the flag that he looks so hard. It's it's not that bad with the skip. I was just trolling, basically. <laughs> Alright, we're on to flag two. Uh, here you can really see the difference between uh, white clouds and pink clouds. Pink clouds disappear when you jump on them once. The white ones don't. All right, flag one is actually free. There's like barely anything that can kill you. I mean, there are spikes here and I've probably died here, but you know, here's the flag. We beat the game, right? Nope. Okay. Here, hi, bad one. All right, last screen of the run. GG's. What can I say? That was a really cool run. I mean, it's not the ending, but still. So far, I'm st oh, insanely surprised. Come on, Beaver, please don't death right now. Alright, and time. Uh, no, not time. Time. GG's. Now it's literally GG's. Alright. 1 hour 48 seconds. Are you happy with that time? It's not fine. So far, yeah, you can <laughs> see my in game time there. Uh, We'll go to the epilogue so we can see how many deaths. Yeah. Uh, Let's see how many deaths were overall. 73 deaths. I guess we'll see. Um, so the epilogue... No, that's, that's insane. So the epilogue changes depending on uh, how many berries you got. Uh, our uh, our pie only, will only have one berry, as you can see. But uh, that's okay. 79 deaths. That's about what I expected. Like I said, my PB had uh, 41. So uh, that's okay. But, uh, I think that we have an incentive true. to do, right? Uh, sorta, yeah. So I, I get I get to show off uh, Pico 8, which I guess I'll count those deaths too, right? Um, <laughs> if you want to, that's fine for us. Alright, uh, so, uh, I'll explain what Pico 8 is. Basically, uh, if you go to the specific area of, uh, of the uh, resort, then uh, you can find this computer, and on the computer there is a a, a game called Pico 8, which is a classic version of Celeste. Which basically Celeste was originally this version that I'm about to play, uh, which they made during a game jam, and then they're like, "This game is fun. Let's make a full game out of it." And then this is how we got the full game. So uh, there's an in-game we'll timer for this, so we don't yeah. we don't need a new timer. Uh, so I'll do 100% for this, just because why not? Uh, we'll probably get more deaths because of that. Uh, it should take about five minutes because I'm not very good at this. Um, so we Don't get worry, to actually collect dying. some berries now. So uh, there are 18 berries to collect in uh, this uh, version of it. So you can see it's... Well, there's the first death. That was really bad. You can see it's uh, essentially the same game, right? But uh, much much more pixelated. Uh, pretty Pretty fun. So yeah, question, Liam. Yep. Are you happy that you are finally be able to get berries? Yes, I wanted to. I I wanted. I I submitted four categories for this uh this game, but and I wanted the berries. I, I wanted one to that collected berries because collecting berries is just so much fun. But uh, they yeah. gave they gave me they gave me beanie, which is is fine. 
Yeah. He's fine, don't worry about it. <laughs> I mean, it's a still fun category to watch too. Hopefully I don't forget a berry. If I do, that that's fine. It, I didn't specify what category I would be doing for this. I'm just doing 100% mostly... Ah, because I can, and it, it doesn't actually take that much longer. Basic opinion. I need. Super cool to see the devs take the original game jam, game and improve it on uh, it in such an epic way. Yeah, like, Celeste is one of the most speedrun games on the planet. Like, it has over 5,000 uh, any percent submissions just because it's such a good game to speedrun because the controls are so good. There's basically, like, an infinite skill ceiling because you can just always keep improving. And uh, also it has an in-game timer, which makes speedrunning easy. Yeah, that's easier for sure. And you don't even need life split then, most of the case. So, yeah. of course, if you don't want... If you uh, don't want to... Uh see your uh what's it called comparison well yeah the comparison for each segment that's it oh i'm dead ah uh -huh. i hit the wrong button i guess we're restarting that's fine we got this oh <laughs> i'm so used to playing the regular game where if i'm about to die i i i, I have a button combination that resets it <laughs> uh but uh that does not work on this uh, uh, guess we're doing that again, King W. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I think. So yeah. this is top three active on speedrun.com after Ultra Kill and Robux. Never heard of Ultra Kill, to be honest. Uh, Even ahead of uh, uh, Super Mario. Super Mario 64 is such a popular game too. Yeah, but it's hard to get your hands on to actually play it, right? Which is not a problem with yeah. Celeste because it came out in, what, like 2017? And you can play it on basically any console or any current gen console. And uh, because it has a loadless timer in the game, then you don't even uh, need a PC to do it. You can, like, if you can stream off your PS4, you can just do it that way or whatever. I have Celeste on Steam, but then I would play it. You yeah. should. It is a good uh, game. I don't think it's my game. I'm not the biggest fan of platformer. But it's like the best platformer. Um, um, I'll think about it. <laughs> I don't know how many times I died before I reset, but uh, we'll, uh, I'll count them up and add that to the total uh, later. Yeah, we can always rewatch the ball. Ah! Again, keys open chests because they're keys, obviously. They open something. In a video game. This berry is like really easy to miss. Because uh, you can't like go backwards in through to previous screens like you can in the full game. Ah! I did it again! What am I doing? Uh, do I continue? Like I, I did the same mistake. On the same exact screen. Uh, Miney, please, please inform. Miney. Um, I'd say give it one more. Okay. Turn if you do it. Yeah, again. one more. I, I, I will take my hand off of the R button because that is the button that. So it, it, in the menu, the R button is down and confirmed for me. And so basically, if I pause, then uh, it uh, presses down and confirms the reset. Straight away, or the, on the death? Uh, just make uh, one reset like five deaths or so. Sure. I think <laughs> I died less than that. Alright. And if you want the uh, viewer, we can count as like two or five deaths. No, uh, it's, it's fine. Reset. Okay. <laughs> Alright, let's not make that dumb mistake for a third time. Let's just not die on that screen, right? Let's just not die. It sounds like a plan. Plan. So, uh, fun fact, you might know that I organize uh, Rubik's Cube competitions, right? Uh, so, fun fact about this version of Celeste is uh, one of the top runners is actually another person who organizes Rubik's Cube competitions in Canada. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't know this until, like, I saw an article on speedrun.com of... Uh, somebody who runs runs this game and then i saw the picture i'm like wait a second i freaking know that guy <laughs> <laughs> so i'm like what the hell 
If I had a nickel for every time. I did the same mistake, but I stopped myself. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Thank you, Beaver. I'm proud of you, Beaver. Yeah, don't throw her. <laughs> oh my god, I'm now I'm just. But yeah, every now. time I had an eagle, when I know someone, uh, I see randomly on the street or so, I would have a lot. Of... I would be rich. What about you, mining? All right, this is a hidden berry. <laughs> not, don't forget that one. Not quite had the meme ghost get it, but I'll, <laughs> we'll go for it. Oh, you mean the, uh, every time you nickel for dead death? <laughs> Uh, it's if I had a nickel for every time something happened, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's still oh, funny yeah. to do. <laughs> I love it's that one too. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. I yeah, that. I heard it. I love it so much. Oh my god, stop dashing up. This game's fun, isn't it? This list is fun. Sorry, Speaking to... of uh, Phineas and Ferb's means, did you know that Dan Povermar created the minions? Hehe. <laughs> I'm spreading this information. I'm such a rebel. <laughs> oh, make it no. You can actually like go through the spikes here up in the top without like going below here, but it's literally frame perfect. All right, so this is where we get our second dash in this uh, version of the game, and instead of having pink hair, we have uh, green hair. So that's cool. Getting hair. If you notice, some of these berries have uh, wings like that, and uh, what the wings do is they, when you dash for the first time on a screen, then the berry will start uh, going up towards the top. Oh my gosh, all these deaths are so dumb and giving money to charity. I mean, it's good for charity, don't worry about it too much. Just don't de donate all your money, please. Yeah, imagine being a poor university student. Oh, wait, that is me. Uh, couldn't be me. What's right. university? I dropped out at, my, at the end of my first term. Uh, what, I'm question? still I somehow standing. I went AWOL. <laughs> I just uh, stopped going to stuff. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, I, I, I barely go to university, too. <laughs> Alright, we're almost done. Oh my gosh, the screen's hard though. I think it might be the last screen. There might be one more that I'm just forgetting. Oh, I, I hit the balloon too early there. If I had a nickel for every time Liam <laughs> accidentally reached at the peak or anyone, <laughs> I would have two nickels. It isn't a That's lot, fair. but it's weird that it happened to me. It's a good one for a phantom. Kids, don't listen to these commentators and take your studies seriously. That's for sure, yes. kids. Well, prepared to myself. Please, uh, don't listen to us. It's good to study. It's good to be a good uh, student or a schooler. Whenever you're in. Uh, I did for forget about this one. If there are any kids watching, especially from the UK, why are you watching? I bet it's a bed, it's at 3 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, if, you, if there are some kids from Russia, well, first of all, uh, good morning. <laughs> it's 5 a.m. here. Oh no. Good morning. All right. Yeah, it's time for school. <laughs> come oh, on, school, man. Guy. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> There we go. All right, that's that's the end. We did it. We got all the berries. Twenty one deaths. Hey, Chi Chi. Hey, twenty one plus seventy nine yeah. is a uh, hundred dollars, or a hundred hundred deaths. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, that was. We just say that was planned. Planned. That was totally planned. Oh, it <laughs> be. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see. Be we're donating in a bit. I hope. Uh, I'll uh, also yeah, be GG's. donating for deaths in my game tomorrow, which is a secret game, and it's uh, oh, it, it also yeah. has a, it also has a death counter, so I'll do that. Yeah, as I always. Wonder... Like yeah, I wonder what's the game. Mighty knows I don't actually, so that's gonna be a big surprise for me. So we'll see Liam or Complex Beaver a little bit later on this day, uh, twenty sixth of uh, May. It's only the and as always, if you like the run. Uh, what? It's only the 25th, though. It, it's 26th for me, right? <laughs> uh, explanation uh, mark around to check out the Celeste leaderboard. And of course, explanation mark runner to check out Beaver. A really good uh, 
and professional runner. <laughs> and of course, so if you're interested in charity, explanation mark donator and explanation mark charity. Uh, thanks for Pretum. And see you in a bit because we are going to transition and we'll be having even cooler game Buffy the Vampire Slayer Chaos Blitz any percent. And it's gonna be erased by Texan Red, uh, Red Wolf, Devs AK, and there's a commentary by Jerome. So see you just in a little bit. Bye bye.